Today on PGTV News, student athletes are returning to gyms. Find out what the guidelines are, that's coming up. And a group launches an effort to keep a school administrator, what that might mean for Polk County school system. That's all ahead and more on PGTV News. PGTV News, I'm Steve Barnes. And I'm Tina Mann. New jobs will be popping up in Polk County soon. Farmer John's Popcorn, headquartered in Rochester, New York, has chosen Lakeland to be home to a new manufacturing facility, according to a release by the Central Florida Development Council. Farmer John's is making a $3 million capital investment to purchase machinery and refit a 7,280 square foot building. After three years in New York, where they have a 30,000 square foot manufacturing plant and distribute across the country, they are expanding to save on their biggest expense, shipping costs. All their products are currently trucked from either their farm in Iowa or their New York site. Construction should be completed by late June, at which time the plant will start producing popcorn, including flavors like peanut butter caramel and chocolate hazelnut caramel. The company will hire about 25 employees in the next 18 months. Jobs range from production to packaging to warehouse. Openings will be announced on its Facebook page. You know, there's a reason we call ourselves the crossroads to opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. We're very centrally located, yep, have it's a, high distribution channels. It's a great place uh, to, distri to distribute to the whole southern end of the, the whole southern half of the, the country, the southeast anyway. Um, yeah, it's exciting to see more jobs coming in, new stuff. And I could go for some peanut butter caramel popcorn <laughs> right now. That sounds delicious. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you've got business at the tax collector's office, it might be a longer wait than you're used to. Joe Tedder, Polk County's tax collector, wants everyone to know that due to social distancing guidelines put out by the Florida Department of Health and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the tax collector's office has currently eliminated about 70% of its seating capacity. Many services the office provides can be done online and by mail, which can save you a lot of time instead of visiting the office in person. Any customers that do have to go to the tax collector office will receive a beeper to take to their cars to tell them when they can come inside and have a seat. They also may be alerted by a text message. Prior to the pandemic, flow of business at the tax collector's office was running where 85% of customers never waited more than 20 minutes to be seen. That has dropped to about 65% now. The tax collector's office, while operational during regular business hours, had to lock the doors as the pandemic shut down public access to government buildings. As such, about 7,500 driver's license renewals and applications were put on hold. The office was still processing some transactions, such as title work for local auto dealers, CDL drivers renewing their licenses, and prisoners, mostly sexual predators, who are being tracked upon release by the judicial system. They all had to get their ID completed with current address within 48 hours, or they went back to jail. Since reopening a month ago, Tedder said the tax collector's office has seen a flood of customers. To see if your service can be done online or by mail, visit polktaxes.com. Doing everything online certainly saves money. Mm -hmm. I was able to renew my driver's license and pay for my registration yep. both at the same time, both early, and then I didn't have to worry about well, it. Well, and I would tell you they did a really great thing. Um, you know, I had an appointment with them uh, prior to the pandemic, uh, prior to the shutdown, and because of the shutdown, my appointment got canceled. Mm -hmm. It was for the uh, real ID driver's license that you have to do in right. person, um, which quick plug, if you haven't gotten your real ID license, you need to make an appointment with a tax collector and get that done. Uh, but yeah, they, they actually contacted everyone who had canceled appointments first and allowed them to come in and get things done to kind of keep things going. But yeah, they're, they're working hard to keep everybody moving over there. So have patience. And if you're used to waiting in line or waiting for dinner at a restaurant, it's really the same concept here. 
take the little beeper, go to your car, listen to some tunes until you're, until you're called. Yep. The future of a local reflection pool is uncertain after years of issues with the installation. A leak coupled with electrical malfunctions have left the reflection pool in Bartow's Fort Blount Park dry for more than three months, leaving city commissioners to decide whether to spend $100,000 to fix it or move in another direction. Commissioner James Clements has proposed tearing out the pool on the northwest corner of Broadway Avenue and Main Street and bringing a permanent stage to the downtown area. He said the downtown area is host to a variety of events during the year, including the monthly Friday Fest, and a permanent stage would get a lot of views. The park, blanketing the entire block, was built in 2002 after the county raised several aging buildings there. Initial proposals included a parking lot, but Bartow's Community Redevelopment Agency lobbied for something more aesthetic. The community raised more than $200,000 towards construction of Fort Blount Park, including sponsorships for the 12 pillars that anchor the west side. For now, the reflection pool will remain roped off until a decision is made. A, definitely a landmark for Polk County. It is. Not just Bartow. It is, and as a Bartow resident, they did a survey of what people would prefer to see and from what I saw it looked like the most most of the residents are in favor of keeping it because it's 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 iconic it's mm -hmm. beautiful it's you know representing yeah when it's area. in operation it's 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 a really pretty and, and tranquil place in the middle of a busy hub mm -hmm. um, but yeah I mean hey a, a, a a stage for entertainment, things like that, that might be a, a viable option. So we'll, have we'll to see, see what happens. Bartow native and Cincinnati Bengal, former Florida A&M coach and athletic director, dean at Winter Haven High School. Those are just a few of the roles that Ken Riley played before he passed away at 72 years old on June 7th. Here's a look back at his life. He led by example, and folks liked him. Well, you know, back then it was 17 rounds, and I was a quarterback. And I was very much surprised that I got an opportunity. I, you know, they called me the, the, day, the night before I was at a basketball game. And they came up to me and said, uh, the Bengals wanted to talk to you. So I went into the, uh, uh, the office and I talked with uh, a representative from the Bengals. He said, we'll be looking to draft you the next round. We heard that you were going to engineering school. I said, engineering school, that was even my major. <laughs> but <laughs> So this, I said, no, they said, are you interested in playing for the Bengals? I said, yes. So they said, we'll, we'll uh, draft you the next round. And the, I guess the fifth round was a guy named Guy Dennis from Florida, guard. He was drafted in the next round. They drafted me, and I became a Bengals. When they drafted me, he had like wide receiver slash quarterback slash defensive back slash. So I was one of the first slashes to come out. <laughs> you should see my garage. It is loaded with just going around the country, playing golf, raising funds to help other people. And believe me, when the uh, Ken called me and said, I need you. I said, I'll be there. And that's why I'm here, because a lot of people need our help. So we said, well, why not raise funds for uh, the technical school? Matter of fact, I was at a meeting yesterday at Travis and uh, on the SAC, that advisory council. And we talked about these things. They had some young people there, a young lady uh, who was just, she had about two kids or something, but she went on for LPN and she got a degree and she said she's doing very, very well. And this is what we are trying to address. Those kids who may not want to go to, uh, to uh, higher education but need a skill because once they leave, you still have to make a, a living for yourself. And I know there's a lot of people who don't have higher education degrees that are doing very, very well. The plumbers, the electrician, the air conditioning, you name it. And that's what we are trying to address at this time. Uh, but today we're out here for the Ken Riley Foundation and Ken gave me a personal phone call. We had met at the Larry Little Foundation tournament down in Miami, and he thought I'd be a fun fit to help raise some money for his foundation here in Lakeland. So he's doing good things for the community. Try to go out and help kids uh, that maybe not going to higher education, uh, but still want to get some type of uh, training to help them be great citizens and be able to work in the workforce. So we've been concentrating a lot on the technical side of it. Last night, we had representatives from Travis, uh, technical School, uh, Ridge Technical School, and also Golf Academy, which is a high school program designed to help those kids who may have had some problems or issues in their regular uh, high school classes and to, to give them an opportunity to come and, and get their degree. So 
Uh, we're not only doing things there, I go back to my alma mater, Florida M University, we help with scholarships there in higher education, also at the Union Academy High School. Uh, we also uh, help with uh, giving kids scholarships to go to school. So it's a great thing, and this is the fourth year we've been doing it. Uh, this is the largest crowd that we've had, especially with the golf tournament. And last night we had some celebrities. Every year people come back and see some of the celebrities. This year we brought in Sam Jones, basketball player. Uh, for the Boston Celtics and he was here and with all the other celebrities that we have coming in. It was a great event and uh, it's, it's, it's the, the foundation is designed to help those kids uh, get an education and some type of skill to help them further in their careers and in their life. You know, I mean, it's something that they can use his name. And speaking of Ken, let me say this about him. I think he's the third leading interceptor in the National Football League. And um, I was shocked to hear that. And, and, and I played with him, but I never put it together because he people with those, right, people with those kind of, yeah. people with those kind of numbers are Hall of Famers. So, you know, he's one of those guys, uh, when I heard about him, I'm, I'm saying, why is he not in here? Okay, so first I like to say that about him, and then to use that energy to put into this charity to help other people. And my understanding is this is his hometown, right? He's from this area. I gotta take my head off to him, it's a plus. It's a plus, plus. Well, it's a brotherhood, and uh, we called upon each other to come and help. I go to Larry Little's tournament, Lawrence who's just left here, if he has a tournament, I come. A lot of times, I might not play golf, but I come, I may be the fourth guy. I like to putt, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, we, we support each other uh, for a good need and for a good cause. And uh, every year, uh, it gets better and better. And uh, I'm just happy that these guys will come back and people get a chance to see them as normal people, just like they are. They just said they were blessed with a the skill. They went out and took advantage of it. But you always want to do something to help your friends. And when you know they're doing something good, they're doing something for others, then you want to be right there. And, and uh, uh, Ken Riley has always been uh, an exemplary uh, leader for us during my time. Uh, with the Bengals. I mean, he was a guy that we all looked up to, and uh, he did just a wonderful job of, of leading. And when he calls, you answer, and you be here. Yeah, it, it was a family, a close-knit uh, family, and, you know, like now, they're sitting there, they're talking, we're reminiscing, you know, and it was a bond that would be there forever. And, uh, you know, back during the day, we played not so much for the money, we played because we loved the game. Certainly a, a icon in the community, uh, has done so much for not just Bartow, but um, for the Polk County community at large, uh, certainly will be missed. Absolutely. After the school administrator announced her retirement, one group is seeking to change Superintendent Bird's mind about leaving. Bird announced her retirement a few weeks ago, surprising many. Since then, the Florida County chapter of the National Coalition of 100 Black Women has written to each member of the school board, urging them to persuade her to remain. The NCBW asks that the school board take no immediate action regarding the retirement notification, but that you schedule a time before such action is taken to give the community an opportunity to speak in regard to both retirement or starting a new search. The coalition also requested that the school board give an accounting as to how behavior that the board acknowledges needs to have ceased relentlessly persist and confirm to the public what it will take for this behavior to change. School board attorney Wes Bridges wanted to make it clear that Miss Bird is retiring, not resigning, which the board could have rejected. You cannot compel someone to continue working if they are qualified and desired to retire, Bridges said. Superintendent Bird has said that she has not told anyone that she is reconsidering her retirement. My letter speaks for me and I have not indicated that to anyone, Bird said. Yeah, certainly let, uh, let her make up her own mind, I think. Right. You know, she certainly earned that right you know, to, to decide whether she wants to keep doing it or not and she's made it pretty clear that uh, she's this ready is the to direction she wants to go in. Family, yeah. But hopefully she'll take this as a 
check mark in her favor as far as how widely admired and respected Absolutely. she is. Absolutely. Yep. Well, Polk schools are getting athletes back into the gym. The first step in the return to normalcy for high school athletes has already begun with the opening of school facilities for conditioning, albeit with many guidelines that will need to be followed. The county's plan came ahead of the decision by the Florida High School Athletic Association's Board of Directors to produce a set of guidelines, or considerations as it's being called, that local districts can follow. The final decisions, however, are left up to the local districts. In Polk County, beginning June 15th, athletes can begin working out in the weight room with the following conditions. In addition to the standard of, uh, conditions of having a physical and a consent form, athletes will be screened and have their temperatures taken prior to entering the facility. Only nine athletes and a coach can be in the weight room at one time, and social distancing must be maintained. Times for each session must be staggered so there aren't two groups of athletes coming and going at one time. The plan is not sport specific. However, athletes can also shoot around in the gym with the same social distancing guidelines and limitations on the number of athletes who can be in the gym at one time. Players will not be allowed to share a basketball. Once a player picks up a ball, he can shoot and rebound his own basketball. There will be no passing drills or sharing of equipment. It'll be interesting to see how long these guidelines have to, because obviously you can't play a basketball game right. and not share the basketball. That would have to write a whole set of rules. Right, and part <laughs> of why they have those drills is to practice those skills of yeah. passing off to somebody, which is sometimes harder than you would think. Yeah. And I would imagine wrestling is going to be a little bit difficult to maintain social distancing. <laughs> that would be very interesting to watch otherwise. But no, I'm glad, be to, in see, plastic I'm glad to see that they're making some, uh, some concessions here and letting kids get back to being active and, and getting back to their athletic programs. Yeah, by keeping them safe. Yep. A local higher education institution has proposed a plan to get students back on campus. Polk State College released a three-phased return to campus plan that returns administrators and other personnel to the college's campuses beginning on Monday, July 20th, as stated in a press release. Most courses will remain online during the fall semester, as is the case with most schools in Polk County. The college understands that the public health situation continues to evolve and the plan will be modified if needed. The college continues to follow recommendations from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the Florida Department of Health, and the Florida Department of Education, the press release stated. The school's proposed plan has already begun in a phase one with many school operations available remotely and only essential employees on campuses. Phase two will begin on July 20th. Remote operations will continue, but will open some student services in a limited capacity. Advising, admissions, and financial aid are among some of the offices opening. Phase three will actually focus on coming back to on-campus operations, but there is no set date at, that, at this point. Well, this past weekend was the first time residents of Lakeland could enroll their kids in summer camps since the coronavirus pandemic shut down all city-sponsored activities across the county. In the past, Camp Blast, the Lakeland Youth Camp for children who completed kindergarten but had not yet entered sixth grade, would have field trips to Tropicana Field to see the Tampa Bay Rays play, a visit to SeaWorld, and a day spent with the Lakeland Flying Tigers. Those plans are off the books because of the present climate, but camp administrators will be focusing on on-site activities. Lakeland's Teen Adventure Service Camp, a service-oriented program for kids in 6th through 8th grades, is completely full. Winter Haven's Summer Fun at the Rec Camp and Rotary Playground uh, have started, but there's still space available. Both camps run through July 31st and are open to city residents only. Polk County Parks and Recreation Director Mike Callender said that for now the county isn't holding any summer camps, but that could change. Always check on social media or the camp's websites for any changes or updated information. I will say this has been a tough year for parents. Yeah. Trying to scramble to find childcare. I'm thankful that my kids are old enough this year to not qualify for summer camp or not need it mm -hmm. because I know I have friends who usually rely on some of these that are not open. So. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, as we said, the 
the place to look for Polk County camps if they decide to open them up is going to be on their social media. So keep them, you know, like them, share them, do whatever you need to do to, to stay up to date. And, you know, they might be opening some of those up soon. Well, thanks for watching PGTV News. The board review is coming up. But first, as seniors leave high school during an unprecedented time, many make it a memorable graduation. Take a look. Unique times call for unique measures. We've been telling our class of 2020 that any challenge can be overcome. So this is another challenge that we're gonna overcome. Thank you all for being here today. Now let the ceremony begin. I'd like to thank you all for being here despite these circumstances. I would not be here today without the love and support of my friends, families, and professors. So thank you to everyone and anyone who ever gave me any bit of advice, love, or support. Um, I thank you and I can't wait to be a nurse. I'm Johnetta Betch Cole. I serve as the president and the chair of the board of the National Council of Negro Women. When we think about the census, what we should immediately imagine is more money than you can shake a stick at. We're talking about the fact that when the census is taken, that information steers decisions. It's based on that information that hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars will be allocated to services that every American needs and deserves. Most of us don't even have a plate anymore. We have a platter. We've got so much service to do. But find some room on that platter to be involved in making sure that we are counted. Because we do count. What your community receives through federal funding is so influenced 
steered toward, determined by the census. We've got to get what we deserve, and that means we've got to do what we must do and participate in the 2020 census. I am what hunger looks like in America. I am an eight-year-old girl who's not excited for the last day of school. Because this may be the last time I'll have lunch. Till September. I am a single father of two who works three part-time jobs. And that's still not enough to put food on the table. I am a 16-year-old boy who just got my first job to help, help feed my, my little sisters. sisters. I was created by artificial intelligence from faces of the one in eight Americans who struggle with hunger. People you pass by every day but never knew they were hungry. Feeding America, 200 food banks strong. There. Can I tell you a cat joke? Just kidding. <laughs> Why did the girl ask the mushroom to dance? Because he was a fun guy. <laughs> what do you call a pig that knows karate? Pork chop. Uh, 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 uh. Um, so how does a tissue dance? Put a little buggy on it. <laughs> Welcome to the Board Review with news about your county government. I'm your host, Tricia Pachette. Today you'll learn about county commission actions from the June 2nd, 2020 board meeting. A work authorization with Curry Controls to provide supervisory control and data acquisition services for the Valley View well site was approved by the board Tuesday. The project is expected to cost about $156,082. The construction manager at risk with Semco Construction was approved by the board Tuesday for the South County Jail non-contact visitation booths project at a cost of about $534,753. This project will remodel the existing interior space into a non-contact visitation configuration that will aid in contraband prevention as well as provide access to professional visitors to meet current demand. In three separate measures, the board accepted a $245,946 surety bond for Cascara Phase Two, a $153,553 surety bond for Summerview Crossing, and a $437,559 surety bond for Highland Meadows Phase Seven. The board also held several public hearings on a variety of items. Those items up for consideration included, the first public hearing was held but no action was taken on a proposed ordinance that will amend the land development code to increase the maximum height for solid waste management facilities within the institutional to land use district. A second and final hearing will be held at a later date. A land development code text amendment was approved by the board Tuesday that removes barriers to high densities in regional activity centers, future land use designation, and allows densities to be reached below the minimum in residential medium designation. The board approved a sub-district map change from Business Park Center 1X to Business Park Center 2X on about five acres of land in the Ronald Reagan Selected Area Plan. The board postponed a public hearing for a proposed resolution to vacate a portion of platted sanitary sewer easement until its August 4th meeting. The board denied a resolution to vacate a portion of platted and unmaintained right-of-way along Crooked Lake. Well, that wraps up this edition of the Board Review. To keep current with programs and progress in the county, visit us online at polk-county.net or follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We encourage you to watch the next scheduled board meeting at 9 a.m. Tuesday, June 16th, 2020. I'm Trisha Pichette. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.